Welcome back to ICC, it is round 9 of the Olympiad and the tension is at an all-time high. In today's round, we saw a heavy matchup on board 1 between India, the current tournament leaders, and Uzbekistan, last Olympiad's champions. It was a battle of the prodigies all around, with the spotlight being board 1, where world championship challenger Gukesh faced former world rapid champion Nodirbek Abdusatarov. In the end, neither side could prevail and the match ended with a 2-2 result, with the games being all drawn. Meanwhile, on board 2, Top Seed USA narrowly edged out local favorites team Hungary with 2.5-1.5 and and after a clutch win by Lenier Dominguez on board 3. China also came out on top versus Iran with Wei Yi bringing the result 2.5-1.5 and, 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 and Armenia edged closer to the leaders as they defeated Team Germany. However, the surprise of the day came from Slovenia as they defeated Norway with 3-1 and board one Fedosev even scoring a win against world number one Magnus Carlsen. Let's see how it all happened. We will begin our review of today's round with a game from the critical USA vs Hungary match. Here as white we have Super GM Lenier Dominguez who has played the move Bishop C5 offering Sinan Sugirov an exchange of dark sword bishops and threatening to take the pawn on b4. Now, this is a critical position for the game. Black needs to act fast and find a precise defense, otherwise he is going to lose the game. So here, it was really necessary to pause and think what are Black's best options. Unfortunately, Sanan Sugirov didn't have the luxury to afford that as he had only 3 minutes on the clock and he had to come up with something quick. He played the move knight to e3 check, which turned out to be a blunder, but let's see why. The only game that manages to keep the equality in this position is bishop takes c5. The point is that after king c5, knight h4, Black is actually in time to create counterplay and not allow white to queen his pawns. So the game could have continued with king takes b4, knight e3, king c5, getting um, out of the way of the pawn, knight d1. This is a common technique, trying to um, score some checks from behind and stop the pawn. So b4, knight takes b2, b5, and here black is simply in time. He can go knight f5, where in the case of b6, he would have the luxury to sacrifice one of the knights and reach a um, drawn position. However, this um, didn't happen in the game. Sanan Sugirov opted for a different approach. He still wanted to take the h pawn and, you know, try to stop the b pawn from queening, but there was one detail he missed. After the move in the game, knight to e3, takes, 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 white is actually a tempo up. It is a very, very similar line, but the difference is that the king is now on c5. White doesn't need to play an additional move to move the king out of the way of the b-pawn, and he can simply start pushing. So the game continued with knight takes h4, b4, king f6, b5. Uh, it's not possible to take the knight because of b6, and neither of the knights is close enough to catch the pawn. So the game continued with king to e7, b6, king d7, and even though the king made it on time, now there are other troubles that black faces. For example here, after king b8, white finished the game with king to b6, because, well, now there is a mating net. On the next move, 
uh, White's knight will come to c5, and it will be impossible to prevent both the maids from d7 and a6. For the next game of our recap, we're going to take a look in the China versus Iran match. The result is one and a half, one and a half, and it all came down to this game between Amin Tabatabaye and Wei Yi. In this position, Amin has been enjoying a slight advantage from the beginning of the game, but in the last couple of moves, it is more of an equalish situation. So here, he had to change gears and start playing like more calmer, just waiting to see what happens, and maybe go for a move like bishop b3, making sure that e5 doesn't happen, and keep the balance. However, he decided to be a bit more aggressive, and he went for the move knight to c5. At the first glance, it appears that if this move works, then white's position is really much better. The problem is that black has a tactic which actually gives him the advantage. Wei Yi played a move knight to e3, cutting the coordination between the white pieces. The idea is that from e3, the knight hits the rook on d1, but also the rook from h5 is now open to take the knight on c5. In the case of bishop e3, Black will actually win the game, because after f takes e3, the queen on d2 is attacked, but also black wants to take on h2. White cannot defend against both, and he'll have to give up the full queen. That's why, uh, seeing all of this, Amin decided to sacrifice an exchange, and maybe hope that in the future he'll have a chance to strike back. So the game continued with rook takes e3, f takes e3, and queen to e3. After queen e5, Wei Yi didn't put a foot wrong for the rest of the game and smoothly came to the final position, which is roughly here. So in this position, it is black to move. And with the weak king on g2, it's not clear what white can do to defend. Amin played the move h4, at least trying to have h5, maybe open some space for the king, but after rook c2, king g1, queen takes f3, his position is simply lost. He doesn't have a perpetual check, and in two moves he just resigned. That was a critical win for GM Wei Yi, as he brought China back into the game. But we have more games to go through, so let's continue with them instead. In the final game of the open section we're going to see, we have Norway vs Slovenia and world number one Magnus Carlsen, as at the moment he's struggling vs Slovenia's Vladimir Fedosev. Magnus has just played the move g4 with the idea to simplify, trade some pawns, and get closer to a draw. At first glance, it appears that the move is working, because in the case of rook takes g4, white has bishop f6 and he manages to retain the balance. If instead black goes for the move f takes g, which happened in the game, after f takes c5, f takes c5, knight e4, black is not really better anymore either. However, there was a critical resource for black that both sides missed. So, in this position, here, after g4, black could have gone for the resource knight to c2, saying, I don't need your pawns, I want to checkmate your king in the middle of the board. The game could have continued with g takes f5, rook takes g4, bishop takes, rook f4, and it turns out that the white king is actually in huge trouble. For example, in the case of king takes c5, we're going to see a force checkmate in two. After bishop d6, 
King d5 and knight e3, finishing the game in style. Even if king takes e5 is not forced, black still regains a huge advantage and he will probably win the game. But let's see what actually happened in the round. So um, after f takes g4, we are going to skip a couple moves and go to this position, which is the next critical moment of the game. So black has just played the move rook to d2, and he's targeting all of black's pawn, all of white's pawns. And here, Magnus has to take a decision: which pawn can he save, and which one is he willing to give up? He has to also include the rook in the game, and the task is not as simple as it looks. He went for the move rook to c1, which turned out to be not the greatest of choices. But his other options weren't really the greatest either. His best chance was to wait and see what black does after a move like b4. Let's say, in the case of rook a2, White will still be able to get the rook into the game after rook d1, king e6, and rook d8, and he will have decent chances of saving the game. If instead black goes for the move e4, just saying, oh, I actually want to go e3, e2, queen, then white can simplify with h3, opening the rook, and here that should be enough for a draw, because in case of rook g2, bishop f4, g3, white has the resource king d5, and one of the pawns is going to fall. Um, instead, after rook c1, which happened in the game, it turned out that all of white's pawns were hanging and it was too much to save the game. The game continued with king e6, threatening to go knight h2, and now we're protecting the e5 pawn, rook c4, king f5, rook, f, rook a4, and after the trades, black was simply up um, in a pawn race, which white couldn't win. In the matter of moves, Vladimir Fedosev managed to bring both of those pawns to the second and the third rank, and Magnus soon resigned. It was a huge win for Team Slovenia and for Vladimir Fedosev, but we have more stuff to do today and we're going to jump to the women's section. In the women's section, Team Kazakhstan continued their impressive run with a win over Poland and are now one step closer to the title. The hero of the day was Alua Norman, who secured victory for her team after defeating Alicia Slavichka. On the next top board matchup, we saw number one Team India take on the formidable USA team. The American ladies managed to grab the early lead after begging to hear Janova defeated by Shali on board one. However, Vantika struck back for Team India as she defeated Irina Crush on board three. The dangerous teams of Ukraine and Armenia also tied their match 2-2 and the other favorites, China and Georgia, both won their matches to get closer to the leaders. Having said all of that, let's check out the best of the day's action. The first game of the women's section we're going to check out is from the Kazakhstan versus Poland match. As white, we have woman international master Alicia Slivichka, and as black, we have woman international master Alua Norman. Here, Alua has just played the move before, as she's trying up to open up the queen side and get a checkmating attack on the white king. However, white's position isn't as dangerous as it seems. She actually has some resources she can use to try and keep the game going. What was necessary was that white captured the pawn on d5, with rook d5, queen takes e6, and then activate the queen to e4. In the case of b takes a3, queen e5 check, king h7, b takes a3, the queen on e5 
keeps a lot of squares under control and the white king isn't as bad as it looks. In the case of queen c1, king a2, there are no more checks and white should be good to go, keeping fighting chances for a draw. However, it's easy to say all of that once the game is over and we're analyzing with an engine. In a practical situation, things aren't as easy and the game instead saw a different move. Alicia played the move a4 as she tried to close out the queen side and maybe in the future advance the pawn to a queen. The game continued with knight to d4, which unfortunately brings a lot of chaos into white's camp. Bishop d1 is not possible because of queen c1 winning the rook. And in the case of rook d3, which happened in the game, after knight takes b3 check, check, rook a6, um, it is impossible to protect the pawn on a4. Game so queen e1, rook a4 check, king b1. And here, Alua managed to show an impressive endgame technique as she continued smoothly. Let's jump to the final position and see how she did it in the end. So, as you can tell, a lot of stuff has happened, but in fact, White never had a chance. Um, all the White pawns were extremely weak and Alua went on to capture them resulting in the final position we see on the board. After rook h7, h2, um, white decided she had seen enough and resigned the game. This is a very, very important for Team Kazakhstan, who is now in the sole lead with only two rounds to go. Well, let's wish them good luck and see how are they competitors doing. The other match that really, really mattered in the women's section was Top Seed India facing Team USA. As I mentioned before, the American ladies managed to grab the early lead with a win on board one, but here on board three, India had a chance to strike back as Vantika was much better versus Irina Crush. So here, in this position, Irina has just played the move knight to c1, hoping to get rid of the d3 knight that paralyzes her position. On this move, Vantika had a stunning combination, which she couldn't find as she only had a couple minutes on the clock. The pressure mounted and the Indian went for a safer choice instead, which we will see how it turned out. But before that, let's see what is Black's biggest resource in this position. Black could have gone for the move knight to f4, threatening checkmate on g2. After the peace sacrifice, there isn't a good way for white to defend the pawn. In the case of g2, the game would end pretty much immediately after rook takes d1, rook takes d1, e takes f3, where there is nothing in sight that can prevent knight e2 and queen takes g1 with mate, or even <laughs> rook takes e2 and again piling up on the g-pawn. In this position, I would say that white's best option is simply to resign and end the suffering. In the case of the g3 defense after knight f4, the game would end relatively quickly again after h takes g3, f takes g3, takes a trade on d1, and queen f3 check. Here, whether it is um, king g1 or king h2, it doesn't really matter as black's next move is rook to e6 threatening to bring the rook to the g-file, and here the attack is unstoppable. The black queen will take on h3, and, well, the king is nowhere near safe. Back to the game, though. In the game, after knight to c1, Vantika went for a safer option, picking up the knight. 
and going for this line. However, turns out that after F4, black is not even better anymore. So the evaluation jumped from completely winning for black to 0, 0, 0. The reason is that white can play the move king to h1. And here, f3 doesn't bring anything for black. After g takes f3, it is actually black who should be careful. In the case of e takes f3, rook g1 would pick up the pawn on g7 with a winning position. That's why the game would need to continue with queen f5, but after king h2, white is still in the game. There is no immediate checkmate and material is equal, so white is able to keep going. This is not easy to find though. So uh, in the position on the board after f4, Irina played another natural move, which, which was kind of unlucky because after e takes f4, e3, her position got lost again. The logic is that in the case of f takes e3, exchanging pawns, after knight to e3, white is under too many threats. Black is hitting both the g2 pawn, the rook on d1, the rook on f1, and there isn't a way to defend all of them. Let's say after rook d2, takes, takes, takes. In the case of king f1, there is queen b1 in the end, and black would be a full rook up. Seeing all of this, Irina preferred the move yeah, f5, trying to deflect the black queen from attacking the g2 square, but it doesn't work either. After queen g5, rook takes d5, takes, and rook e2, the game ended with white's resignation, as again, that is the team of the position, g2 is simply too weak. I mean... To cap off our recap of the day, we're going to take a look at the Queen End game, which happened in the match China vs Turkey. On board 1, we have GM Zuzhiner as she's taking on IM Ekaterina Tolok. In this game, White has just played the move King to E2, moving her king away from the d5 check. Now, it is up to black how to continue the game. Does Ekaterina play the move queen e5, giving some more checks, or does she advance the pawn to h2? Well, she made the choice to play h2, but it was a move she would come to deeply regret in a couple moves. The correct continuation was queen e5, where after king d3 and h2 now, the game would have likely ended in a draw. After h1 queen, white could pick up the pawn, but it doesn't appear that either side will have anything to push for a win. However, instead, the continuation in the game, h2, gave white the upper hand. And after queen queen, Zhu found a stunning combination to win the game in a forced way. The problem for black is that two queens on the board are rather dangerous, and white is free to create threats against the black king. The game continued with queen f8 check, king g6, and queen g4. Here, black was forced to go queen g5, because in the case of king h6, queen g1 would be made. The game saw queen g5, queen e4 check, and it was again time for black to hide. Going to the h-file is not possible because of queen h8. f5 is also not really advisable because of queen e8 and again queen h8 made. 
and the move queen f5, which at first appears to save the day for black, loses a queen in a surprising manner. Zhu blitzed down the move queen to e8, and after king g5, she traded queens. The point was that after queen e4, black is forced to play king g5, where f4 is a discovered attack for white. And in this position, Ekaterina resigned, not waiting for her queen to be captured after queen h1. I don't think there is a better way to end this recap than this stunning combination. So here we're going to take the chance to wish luck to all the teams for tomorrow. We will see you in our recap around 10. So keep watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and keep following the action here on ICC.